In Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from Birmingham jail, he crafts a powerful response to criticisms by white clergymen regarding his involvement in the Birmingham protests. Written in 1963, King's letter serves as a call for immediate action against racial injustice and a forceful argument for the necessity of civil disobedience in the face of unjust laws. Throughout the letter, King employs a wide array of rhetorical strategies, including appeals to ethos, pathos, and logos, to persuade his audience. He establishes his credibility by referencing his role as the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and his commitment to nonviolent resistance. His ethos shines through as he aligns himself with historical figures like Socrates and Jesus, drawing parallels between their acts of civil disobedience and his own. King strategically appeals to the emotions of his audience, employing pathos to evoke empathy and understanding. He vividly describes the harsh realities of segregation and the daily struggles faced by African Americans, aiming to elicit an emotional response from the readers. Phrases like, when you have seen vicious mobs lynch your mothers and fathers at will, serve as poignant reminders of the gravity of racial injustice. Furthermore, King masterfully employs logos, or logical reasoning, to dismantle the idea that waiting for justice to come gradually is the right approach. He critiques the notion of wait and emphasizes the urgency of the civil rights movement. He argues that waiting perpetuates injustice and that privileged individuals fail to understand the depth of oppression experienced by African Americans. King addresses the notion of tension, acknowledging its presence but also its necessity for societal change. He distinguishes between negative tension, which arises from injustice and suppression, and positive tension, which prompts individuals to confront and address issues. He urges his audience to embrace this tension and use it as a catalyst for positive change. One of the most notable aspects of King's letter is his appeal to morality and natural law. He argues that there are two types of laws, just and unjust. Just laws, he says, align with moral principles and uplift human dignity. In contrast, unjust laws are out of harmony with moral law and dehumanize individuals. King advocates for the responsibility to disobey unjust laws in the pursuit of justice, drawing from moral and philosophical principles. King also addresses the criticism of his involvement as an outsider in Birmingham. He defends his presence by highlighting the interconnectedness of all communities and emphasizes that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. He asserts that as a leader of a nonviolent movement, it is his moral duty to address injustice wherever it exists. Moreover, the letter showcases King's eloquence and mastery of language. His use of powerful metaphors, such as comparing justice to a river and likening the church to Noah's ark, adds depth and imagery to his arguments, making them resonate more deeply with the readers. In conclusion, Letter from Birmingham Jail stands as a timeless piece that not only defends the necessity of civil disobedience but also serves as a moral and philosophical treatise on justice. King's strategic use of rhetorical devices, coupled with his impassioned plea for immediate action against racial injustice, continues to resonate and inspire movements advocating for equality and justice across the globe.